very poor. And uh, yeah, yeah, sir. <laughs> absolutely. That's my wife. So uh, <laughs> what happened was that uh, I wrote to the journalist. She wrote back, and I met this entrepreneur in uh, one of these five-star hotel lobbies. And the passion of the entrepreneur was enough to call her to the group. We we funded them. They were the article in Mint yesterday. And so in our own small way, we are doing what we can do. Um, I have no expectation of return in this company. Um, we haven't put a large amount of money into this company, but that passion from these, this husband-wife team to do what they're doing, uh, putting the supply chain of farmers together is outstanding. So there is a start. The investors are looking for, for investing companies. You just said, where are we? You know, today if I, you know, it's just like I can wait till I'm 55 and then I'll say I'll do it, but Bill Gates retired at 50. So I said, if Bill can, you know, retire and give everything up, we can do our own very small damn thing and start. So we have started. It's not like we haven't started. 39 companies. Okay, Milk Mantra, when we did it, we did it for commercial. Yes, he is helping farmers, but reality was it was commercial investment. Those two people who put in, I, th I think they put in for commercial requirements. But in our own small way, we started one out of 40 companies we've done, which is social in our view. So hopefully we can have a little better ratio as we go. And if I'm sitting in the stage two years from now, we'll see at least four companies five companies and as we make more exits and we feel more comfortable because in, but like Mahesh said from our professional side we certainly can't do it because we have LPs and I can't go to my LP you know I just felt good and I wrote an article and you know I, read, I spent you know two crores of yours it was not my money it's somebody else's money but as, as the market matures ladies and gentlemen this will happen we'll have institutional money also coming which is already there but it's just next step. Uh, it's been a very interesting discussion, but I've just understood the word Indian and because you have spoken uh, about social a lot and I understood the word investor, revenue and returns, but I've still not understood the word impact and how do you actually, um, you know, define, measure and account for impact at different levels and we heard Srijan earlier speak when he was defining Pura uh, about measuring social consciousness, harmony levels and litigation issues within the own community. So, um, you know, suppose if you go to Dharavi here and, you know, I have to explain to the guy what is impact. Oh, impact kya cheez hai bhai? You know, and he tells me that I'm anyway making an impact for the last 20 years because he's producing a lot. Now, that might not be the organized segment. Um, and, the, you know, similarly, if you go to somebody in Bihar and say there's an NGO there and uh, he's working in July delinquency <coughs> or probably giving youth vocational training and I as a businessman donate, donate is the word, uh, money to him, I am actually investing in impact because I'm stopping somebody from going to crime who will then disturb my business. So I just wanted to take this word uh, impact a little more broader than just revenue and uh, uh, returns. Thank you. Would you like to yeah, let me just take that. I mean, uh, <coughs> uh, having, we have been trying to measure impact for so long in Avishkar, I can tell you that, and it's not very easy to measure. And uh, just to cut the whole long story short, I would rather, if you are an entrepreneur and if you are looking at raising money, I would rather go with Rashid's idea that please don't confuse the entrepreneur. Just say that you are here to make a big business and this is what it is. And you will please leave it to the entrepreneur to find out ways of how he wants to measure the impact and all that. If you are a promoter and entrepreneur, you should just be <coughs> doing, focused on doing what you want to do and really do it very well. And if you are able to convince that and say it clearly, the money will come. Is there anyone else who thinks differently about defining impact here? No, there are norms. I mean, we have investors who have... Here's the second bottom line, third bottom line. There, there are established norms, but I, I mean, I, I go with this thing. If you're an entrepreneur, just build a good business. Leave it to the investors to justify their investments. All right. We can use all our models and right. say this is it. To please our LP, so we can do all that. So. Hi, uh, I'm Sundar Rajan, CEO of Janani Force. We are into agri sector. Uh, I am missing the impact investor. Maybe they are missing me the other way around. That's not the issue. Uh, if you look at the impact investment, there are two major issues. One is the money available is very minuscule to the uh, amount required. Other one, the investors are finding it difficult because of the high risk uh, involved with the enterprises. I have an out-of-the-box uh, idea. And one gentleman also asked me what Bombay can contribute to the social sector kind of things. Uh, today, it's 
one of the area for the investment is uh, the so called uh, csr corporate social responsibility but my experience has been that that money has come for two reasons one the corporate gets uh, tax thank you uh, anil sinha from ifc international finance corporation i like the esteemed panel's views on standard setting and codes of conduct uh, we were talking about ecosystems of what it what's needed uh, the banks have codes of conduct the big international banks have the equator principle which ifc has been um, uh, helping uh, develop and and disseminate the microfinance sector better late than never is now looking at a common code of conduct for responsible lending as you know that the crisis also had another lens to it which was irresponsible lending how long before this industry needs those standards and should we look at it at an early stage we've already seen examples of very budding social enterprises going south almost by too much too much in lending too much in publicity too much in grants so should we be looking at certain standards for impact investing and uh, and just your views on that thank you sure so if i can, if i can just take a shot at bodhi and so I, i think the the broad you know push of this panel so far is if you're saying i'm a social enterprise hence please expect lower returns that's not a story that's very likely to fly in front of many professional investors i think broadly that's a one line summary so if you're looking for a dispensation a handout a special government legislation not you as i answering the previous question i'll come to you sir right i think it's a little difficult to expect that it to ask a government to legislate is is you know opening up another uh, can of worms coming to the second issue in terms of uh, the governance norms that you put in place for the investees uh there is not currently to the to my knowledge uh, a standard set of norms that sebi or rbi lays down however the norms that individual as us we investors have norms in terms of governance that we that we put into our <coughs> companies plus we are also somewhat governed by the norms that our lps put on us so if cdc is a large uk government based body which has its own set of norms and if cdc invests in a fund that fund has to follow its norms so there are there are sets of norms so we will you know we uh, we can't invest in alcohol you know in in, in alcohol cigarettes etc uh, and neither can our investors do so uh, there's a code of conduct so there are codes of conduct that that are bubbling up because the investors are demanding that it's it's hard for this industry to seek to self regulate but i think there are reasonable numbers of checks and balances already out there can i add to that yeah, yeah. yeah just to add to what mahesh said i think it's also the if you're investing early stage you would rather expect the entrepreneur to do what he is best at doing and there are multiple things in terms of corporate governance back end systems even basic simple accounting stuff etc so the the onus of the investor is that much is that much higher in such early situations so a good investor is somebody who can appreciate these things and yet not make the things too taxing for the entrepreneur to be able to find a way that we are also keeping a tab on all these governance issues because an early stage entrepreneur is building these companies for later stage for later stage growth and later stage investments so the criticality is very important that we are the guys who need to drive in the system to be able to work along with the entrepreneur to build these codes of conduct governance issues in each of their companies yeah uh, from some of the panelists i uh, 